it's real close, real close. Hmm. No, it's not Robert, it's Kevin. I really hope I can edit this, because if not, that's awkward. <laughs> It's Jay and I'm here with my December wrap-up. If the quality of this video is really weird, it's because I'm filming on my phone because I'm not the smartest girl and I left my SD card at school. So this is what we're gonna have to work with. I'm super sorry, but it's happening because it's December 31st and I need to film this video. So without further ado, let us get started. I like couldn't do that because I'm so close to you guys. Like, said a total of six books. Well, not books, like I read a total of six things. I say things because three of them are short stories, which were like under 36 pages, so I don't know if I can count that. The first four books that I'm going to show you guys, I was sent for review by the authors or I went off of Goodreads in exchange for my honest review. The first thing that I read this December is Rosebud by Kevin Scott Olson. It follows a Navy SEAL named Michael Quinn, and his assignment this story is to protect a young Russian pianist from being assassined. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was extremely short, which obviously is a short story, but it was able to grab my attention right from the- The reason I only gave it 2 stars was because I found the ending a bit random and unnecessary. I did find the story a bit repetitive at times. It kind of just kept going over and over the same things, which I feel like in 36 pages you shouldn't have to do that. I could definitely see this character becoming a full-length novel, which Kevin Scott Olsen actually is making. A full-length novel coming in the fall based on this character so that that's kind of cool because i said it in my review on goodreads that he should do that and now he is so he took my advice i guess <laughs> the next book is also a short story it is adventures in retail by ck connor it's actually so funny i found myself laughing out loud a couple of times it was exactly what i needed after reading a super long book it's a collection of short stories that the author put together based on his co-workers that he worked with during his dietary supplement career I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for something lighthearted and cute. It's only 36 pages, so it's super fast read, but it was really cute and it made me laugh out loud a couple of times, so why not? The next thing that I read is also a short story, and it is also by C.K. Connors, and it is Table 9. This short story follows a nameless man who, at the beginning of the story, is in jail, and we don't know why. It's something to do with a waitress named Jessie who always looks after Table 9. Although the story is really short, it's again only 36 pages, it caught my attention right from the beginning, which I think is incredible for such a short story. I could not put it down, I read it in one sitting, which is not that hard because it's only 36 pages, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I really enjoyed how the writing was laid out. It had parts from the man's past, where he first met Jesse and all that jazz, but then it also transitioned all the way through his life and into the present when he was in jail so it was kind of cool to see how it flipped back and forth it worked really well for this story i think all the characters were really developed which is super hard for such a short story but i didn't feel like any of them were just kind of thrown in there at random just because he needed a character they all kind of worked really well together and it made the story even more enjoyable i think ck's writing is so beautiful and so emotional and it was so good and this is only 36 pages, so imagine what would happen if you actually wrote a real book. That's all I'm saying. CK, write a real book. I will read it because I love your writing. The next book that I read is Ella's Love by Jasmine Lee. I gave this a 1 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I did not like it. Marcus is the lead singer of a successful metal band, and Ella is a single mother with a lot of baggage. They meet by chance three times, and then they finally decide on their third meeting that they are going to make this relationship work because, you know, they've met three times, so clearly it's fate. The story unfolds, Marcus has to decide if he's willing to sacrifice a lot of things to be with Ella, and Ella has to decide if she's okay with loving this man and opening herself up to be hurt yet again. The insta-love in this book is so cringeworthy, it hurts. It drove me insane. Literally a week after they met, they're already like, Oh my god, I love you so much. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. I feel like we've been together for a Like, no. I hate Insta Love. You probably all know this by now. It drives me crazy. I found the dialogue in this book to be so annoying. I could not deal with it. It drove me insane. I hated it. I honestly found myself rolling my eyes at this book more than I was actually reading it. It was really quick read. I read it in a couple of hours. 
just because I wanted to get it over with. The next book that I read was The Merciless by Danielle Vega. I absolutely love this book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars, I believe. I kind of want to give it a 5, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have a review up of it super soon, in a couple of days probably, so I will link that down below if you guys are interested. Check that out. But it's one of my favorite books of 2015 now. I absolutely loved it. And finally, I read a book called Daddy by PJ Ferguson. I absolutely loved this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It was so good, guys. It starts off really slow, but then as soon as the main thing happens, that kind of gets the ball rolling, and it is so entertaining, I could not put it down. Daddy follows a man named Joe Williams who lives a pretty mundane life with his twin boys, Sean and Mikey, and his wife, Maddie, until a tragedy strikes the family, and it is up to 12 jury members to make the right decision to help the family move on from this tragedy. It was so good, you guys. I absolutely loved it. It is one of my favorite books of 2015 now. It started off pretty slow, and I was kind of like, oh no, like, I'm gonna hate it, like, it's gonna be terrible. But then the tragedy hits, and it's just like, freaking steamroller. Everything happens at once. It is so good. I could not put it down. I just had to know what happened. Oh, just so good. So good, guys. This is PJ's debut novel. Honestly, it does not feel like a debut novel at all. It is so well written. It flips perspectives from each character and it really helps develop the story. Definitely one of my favorite books of 2015 now. Guys, if you can pick this book up, email PJ, ask him for a copy because it is so freaking good. I loved it. And he just sent me his next book, the first. So I am definitely picking that up very soon because if it's anything like this, I am so excited to read it. Alright guys, so that was my December wrap up. I will see you in my next video. Happy New Year to everybody and goodbye! Famous man. I was gonna say named, but he's not named. <laughs> Why can't I speak English?